Mr. Clapp, do you have written testimony that you've uh, provided not us? Not at this time. Okay, I'm, that's I'm, fine. I may submit later, but thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak to, to everybody here. Um, I've been involved in the shared parenting movement for over 15 years. Uh, my divorce took place in 1992, um, and uh, at that time my children, my two boys, were three and six years old. Uh, and after a couple of years of um, back and forth, um, uh, uh, we, my, my children were uh, benefited by shared parenting. And I do want to mention that, that they were back and forth um, uh, quite a bit between the two houses. We did three days, four days. And I think we did that because uh, both my ex-wife and I agreed that um, we didn't want to be apart from our children for more than, than four days. And that was the best we could do, three, four. So they were bouncing around like gypsies, I suppose you'd say. But you know what? They had two um, loving parents involved in making decisions in their lives. And, and they benefited tremendously. Um, and of course, being involved in bringing up the children, we stayed involved. Um, I, I paid for some very expensive college educations. My, my boys are now 24 and 27. Uh, since I was not impoverished by the, the process, I did not pay big legal fees. Bob Thor was my uh, attorney, by the way. Um, I was able to, uh, I'm not actually- I'm sorry, who did you say? Bob Farr. Oh, thank you. The, the former representative. <laughs> representative, yes. Uh, and, um, I was able to, uh, well, I'm now in a position to, to, to buy a house for my granddaughter who lives in Grass Glastonbury and I'm very involved in my granddaughter's life. Um, so why am I here since I have such a happy story? I, I thought you might be interested in a happy story. Um, <laughs> we do. Um, and, and I'm here because um, it was not obvious that that would happen. In fact, it seemed to me that the court system was set up to prevent what, that from happening, the shared parenting situation from happening. Uh, the, uh, the assumption was that as the primary breadwinner, I would have, you know, the usual Wednesday night and every other weekend. And that's the, the courts were perfectly ready to sign off on that and did sign off on that. Um, and, and there was no, you know, when I, when I mentioned the fact that I had a flexible schedule as a college professor, I, I had time, you know, I could, I could have spent afternoons, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and I had a house, a four bedroom house sitting there uh, that uh, empty at that point in time. And, um, you know, why, why shouldn't it just be assumed that, that we would have uh, equal parenting time? Uh, why wouldn't that be the best interest of the child? And it was not, and I went through a process, um, mostly pro se, but in the end, my ex-wife had the wisdom to agree. She voluntarily agreed to a uh, shared parenting situation because she understood, of course, that that's in the best interest of the child. I was lucky. The system did not help me. And that's my, that's my complaint. And basically, I'm here to suggest that you use my case as a template uh, for uh, for the presumption of, of shared parenting time, unless, of course, there's some clear uh, and compelling evidence that there's abuse or, or, or you know, uh, neglect or some other kind of problem, which is a small percentage of the cases, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Thayer. I'm sorry, Thayer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, you just said that you went through a process yes. for the two of you to be able to reach some sort yeah. of joint conclusion as you were so correct that the children need both of you and you could work this out without the use of the court. So what was your process? Okay, well it started uh, of course in the, uh, at the courthouse when we were working on the divorce agreement. Uh, we had um, uh, facilitators, I don't know, in the kind of the back room behind the, the, the uh, judge, judge would, chamber. Would that be family relations? Maybe? Uh, probably, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, it's 1992. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, and, and uh, so we talked to a couple of people, and I talked about my interest in shared parenting, and I just got a, a glazed look, like, yeah. no. You know, I, you know why, why would you expect that? And um, then, you know, Bob Farr quite wisely recommended that we not spend huge sums of money and we just agree uh, to, 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 to the standard formula. So we, so we did. Um, uh, and, and then, you know, I, I kind of pleaded with my ex-wife. and just kind of basically kind of quietly every t chance I got, you know, said, look, I'm a good father. You know, why, why, why shouldn't I be involved half time? And, and we ended up with family relations um, in a process where, you know, mediation process on that. And we went in 
every day, and I didn't get any help at all from the two mediation counselors and, and family relations. Um, in fact, the, what really um, a very negative thing was that it was a man and a woman who were the, who were the uh, family relations officers, and they started off by saying, you know, this is not about financial. We're not going to talk about financials. This is about um, custody time with the children. Okay? Agreed. So we went on and we had a number of meetings. I kept quietly insisting I'm a good dad. I should have half time. And my wife, uh, ex-wife uh, finally said, you know, okay, I agree. I'll give you half time. And the woman, the family relations counselor, turned to her and said, you know, this is going to have financial implications for you. I thought that was very negative. Okay. And if I could just say one other thing. I think part of my proposal is that the gals, the guardian ad litem, should be, should be, um, trained to advocate for shared parenting. This is the best outcome for the children, if at all possible, unless there's a, um, a definite evidence of abuse or neglect. And, and that should be a major objective that they have. And I don't think it is at this time. Representative Vargas has a question. Thank yes, you. I'm very happy that uh, you were able to stay engaged in your children's lives and that they uh, we're able to get a college education out of it and that your granddaughter's going to get a house out of it. And I just, uh, so you're saying, basically, if I understand your testimony correctly, you're saying that the default position, the current default position of our, of our system is one that basically does not at all encourage shared, if anything, it seems to discourage shared parenthood. Yes, basically, um, unless the parents voluntarily agree, which man many parents do, of course, understand that this is obviously in the best interest. But it's in these cases where there are control issues, I think is usually the underlying issue. Now, who's going to be in control of this situation? And then the system doesn't help at all get them to the shared parenting uh, outcome, in my opinion. Now. Thank you. Mr. Detail has a question. Um, you said that you worked with family relations in 1992, I think. Um, Representative Vargas is saying that you maybe have a current case, or this this was in 1992 that you were trying to get your custody issues settled. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Oh, oh go ahead. No, that's all right. no, absolutely. No, I go ahead. I was just going to tell him thank you, but no, go ahead. No, no, no. Um, do you know what the rate of um, the employed family attorneys were back in 1994 when you got divorced because I'm wondering if the system has evolved to this detriment now because there were more attorneys being hired and they were working in the field now that you see that there's an influx of GALs that are actually attorneys that are not getting hired by other for other things other in family law law well the change I've seen over these uh, what is it 20 25 years or whatever um, is uh, it, there were no GALs involved in my case I think GALs that did exist back then but um, not widely used um, and um, attorney for the minor child same thing because remember we were not required to pay for college education back then and my understanding is one of the changes that occurred when that law came into effect in the early 2000s is that then the judges started saying, well, the children have some interest here beyond child support. They have interest in college, and therefore we need an attorney for the minor child. So I've seen the, the number of professionals, high-paid professionals involved in cases increase over these 25 years, you know, and therefore higher fees paid. Uh, on, a, on a constant dollar basis, adjusting for inflation, I think I probably paid Bob Farr you know, a couple hundred dollars an hour then, and so that's worth what three fifty now or something. So, um, yeah, it's, it was expensive still. I didn't pay for many hours. Thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, we appreciate your uh, testimony, and if you did want to submit something in writing, you can always do that at a later date. Okay, thank you thank very you. much.